What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talk of the Tundra. Your Green Bay Packers podcast is a proud partner of the Eurostep Podcast Network and the Blue Wire family. As always, I am your host, Numak, and joining me once again for a little bit of Pittsburgh Steelers Green Bay Packers preview content is my lovely co-host, Jordan Tresky. Jordan, how are you doing, buddy? Doing well, doing well. Let's let's uh, let's talk some pack steel. What? Go ahead. I I don't know. That, <laughs> this is not a good. Hopefully, this is not the kind of start that the Packers get off on Sunday. We love a transition. We love yeah, a transition. Exactly. <laughs> um, Packers facing off against the five and three Pittsburgh Steelers this Sunday in Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh having a better year than what you'd anticipate them having, considering who, <laughs> like we say every year, like we say every year, considering their uh, their offense and their offensive coordinator, most uh, uh, frankly. But yeah, second in the AFC North, I believe, behind the um, the Baltimore Ravens. Yes, Baltimore is seven and two, and the rest of the AFC North is five and three. God yes. damn. Um. But before we get into the preview of that, all we have some cheeses to hand out after a wonderful win against the Los Angeles Rams on Sunday. Um, there was a lot of discussion. I shouldn't say a lot. A lot of players eligible to receive a cheese this week. Me and Jordan had around six that we had counted that for sure could have been um, receiving one, including uh, Colby Wooden and Dontavion Wicks. And who was the other, the, the third outsider? Luke Musgrave, Luke I believe Grave. Jair was in the mix too. We had a yeah. lot. This it's a very, it's a very welcoming feeling to have more players that we could actually pick rather than not enough. And you're like the third one's kind of like a eh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, like you're from Home Improvement. <laughs> um, regardless of all that, um, I think it, it is worth a shout out, Colby Wooden. And um, Dante Van Wicks, a couple of rookies that really came on well uh, on Sunday. Colby Wooden had only played 18 snaps, which is the reason he ends up not getting a cheese this week. Um, was the second highest graded um, player in PFS defense statistic. Um, had one total pressure um, along with a tackle, but was just making a lot of um, a lot of plays in general. Like we said, there wasn't a whole lot of counting stats for him. Um, in his 18 snaps on Sunday, but he was definitely making an impact when he was in the game, uh, replacing um, Kenny Clark in duo with uh, Carl Brooks. So that being said, oh, also done Tavian Wicks. Just a good game with him. I think if he doesn't fumble, he might be sliding in, but... Um, we didn't even mention Aaron Jones, too, who, again, if does If, he, if he doesn't fumble, then he probably gets one as well. Yeah. But... The fumble came at a pretty inopportune time, and being the leader that he is, a fumble from him is going to drop him out of Chiefs contention, unfortunately. This, the standards we have for those players. But without further ado, a happy cheese this week. Three happy cheeses. First of which goes to game standout uh, Carrington Valentine, uh, highest rated player in P- on PFF's uh, defensive stat. Only uh, 14 yards against him. He was targeted eight times for only one reception, 14 yards, and three uh, yards after the catch. And then had two total pass breakups. So after getting picked on in Denver, really bounces back this week after Razul's departure and steps up and makes life for Bukunakua, Cooper Cup, and Tutu Atwell pretty pretty tough on Sunday with Brett Ripien throwing to him. Yeah, a very, very good game all around. The kind of thing that we saw from preseason from him, and to see it translate against number ones, um, you know, in a big spot coming after the Razul trade, yada yada yada. <laughs> um, I'm just very happy that Karen and Valentine really, as we mentioned last pod, the reaction pod to uh, the win over the Rams, really put his imprint on that game right away, and it it, it helped set the tone for a, a gritty Packers win. Gritty is the right way to put it because while when it was ugly. But regardless of all that, the second player also on the defensive side to get a cheese this week was one linebacker Isaiah McDuffie filling in for Quay Walker. He was the third highest highest rated uh, Packer on defense on Sunday, 
registering a total on PFF of what looks like to be seven tackles, um, including four stops, which is uh, PFF's metric of if you just make up a, a positive play on defense, stop a, a, a play from really getting its full, I guess, yardage it was intended to is this simple way to put that. But yeah, another guy that was flying all around really didn't have the counting stats besides the the tackles. He didn't have any pressures or anything, but really making a lot of good plays, I think, as evidenced by that stop stat um, that PFF has. And we had talked about it, I believe, post-game on, on Sunday, but I think this is where Isaiah McDuffie really shines is when Devondre Campbell or Cray Walker is out for any given week, and he can really do his job and be a linebacker instead of being forced to cover and coverage as an edge rusher when he has to fill in for Rashawn Gary or Preston Smith or anybody else off the edge. Yeah, and it's good to have this depth come when obviously the Packers have been without Devontae Campbell. Now it's Quay Walker's turn to miss hopefully just one game, but we'll get to that later. Isaiah McDuffie has been really a, a bright spot amidst all the kind of uh, craziness of the last, or basically this whole year. Um, really have liked what we've seen from him and seen some market improvement from him as, I think this is what, his third year, correct? Yes. Um, I believe so. Let me, I, I, right. I can check quick. But yeah, I just, I like what we've seen from him in the run run defense category. And I think he's just been more of a, a sturdy defender as time has gone on. Right. Yes, McDuffie's third year. So, yeah, I totally agree with you. He's coming along quite nicely and is shaping out to be a good depth piece, um, if nothing else, on the defense. Um, That brings us to our last cheese, which goes to quarterback Jordan Love. Limited his mistakes um, on Sunday against the Rams and their their stout defense. 20 for 26, 228 yards, um, and a touchdown couple or a few sacks some of which weren't totally sacks but um just in general played played pretty well and was pretty happy to see him bounce back after that losing streak against a defense that like we said it wasn't bad it's they're by no means a a bad defense but really to be able to stand in there at times with Aaron Donald and others breathing, breathing down his neck and standing in there throwing the ball um and getting some completions down the field yeah, I, again, efficient passing game, made plays when it mattered, spread it around um, to, I believe, I think it was eight different wide receivers, of, as we mentioned last time. Easily the most efficient game of his uh, career as an NFL quarterback. It, it's very, as much as it was tempting to go with Aaron Jones, given the reasons why, you know, it's it's very related to why Jordan Love was so successful, kind of got to give Jordan Love the the props here in terms of making the plays. Obviously, the game uh, deciding touchdown, not that it was out of hand or wasn't going to change <laughs> at that point, but uh, I, I I just liked what we saw from Jordan Love in a very real way, and hopefully it's something to build on, too, because you know we just want to see consistency at this point. No, I strong agree. I think that was the biggest thing that we were looking forward to out of that streak was consistency and, and limiting the mistakes that he was making. So I'm, I'm happy with it as long as he continues to uh, develop like he did against that, that defense and against teams moving forward the rest of the season, I think we'll be in a better spot than we were in that four game stretch, but progress isn't linear. Hopefully there is not too many other games like there was during that, that four game stretch throughout the rest of the season. But I guess, That'll be the first test this this week is against this Pittsburgh Steelers team that has a pretty stout defense. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> the likes of which is T.J. Watt. But we'll get into the T.J. Watt and the rest of the defense in a moment. Um, brief history before we get into it. Uh, Packers are 19-16 and 16 against the Steelers all-time during the regular season. Uh, their lone playoff win over Pittsburgh came in that memorable Super Bowl 45 against Ben Roethlisberger. Um Rashard Mendenhall, and I think, I forget who the receiver was. I don't think Heinzor was still there. Maybe Mike Wallace. Mike, no, he definitely was there. Mike Wallace is definitely there, too. Heinz Ward was? Yes. Oh, yeah. Got it. Well, I, I didn't know when he retired. Like, 2010 seemed like the area of when Heinz Ward. Cut off? Yeah. 2011 seems almost like he would have 
been declining at, at two. I don't think he would have stayed too far deep into the tens. Eisenhower was there. Antoine Randall-L. Emmanuel he was, Sanders. Antoine Randall-L is still there? Yes, Heath Miller. Remember Heath? You mentioned uh, Richard Mendenhall, mm-hmm. the key fumble. Yep. Obviously Big Ben. Um, when did Heinz Ward retire? Heinz Ward retired. That was his. No, that was the next game. Or next year, sorry. Got it. Got it. Second to last year. Got it. So the Packers are headed into Pittsburgh. Um, haven't won in Pittsburgh, according to Dusty, Dusty Evely um, on Twitter, since December 6th, 1970. A 20 to 12 win by the Packers in Three Rivers Stadium. And it was Bart Starr's last win as a quarterback um, of the Packers. So it's been a, it's been a while uh, since the Packers have went to Pittsburgh and secured a win. It's not been one week since <laughs> the Packers won in Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, they will no longer be entering Heinz Field, so maybe Packers um, pay catch-up. Maybe just didn't like that, and they'll have a chance to, I guess, like insurance. I can't imagine it's not an insurance company for uh, wherever Pittsburgh plays I now. I saw it, the name of it. Acrisure. Yeah, it sounds like an insurance company. <laughs> yeah. Are you Acrisure about that? Oh, God. Okay, um, let's stop boring our listener. <laughs> Um, this week's injury report, um, fairly long for the Packers, not the, as it always is. As it always is. Um, we'll start with the, the DNPs. Jair out with a shoulder, did, uh, did not practice with a shoulder injury, so that's something new, um, as opposed to the back injury that he was favoring the game that he missed, I think two games ago against the Raiders. Um, so much for Jair saying he's the healthiest he's ever, ever felt. <laughs> Coming out of that game, um, hopefully it's nothing, and we can have him back for for this game. Um, Yash Nyman was a DMP on Wednesday, so was John Runyon. Um, Yash had a back injury. John Runyon had a, had a neck injury, and Quay Walker was still a DMP with his groin injury. So we will see about those four players playing or practicing the rest of the week. Obviously, we're recording on Wednesday, um, Thursday, Friday still TBD, but I think all four of those players might have a chance depending on obviously their severity, but Jair didn't come out of the game uh, on Sunday against the Rams. It's probably just something lingering. Obviously Quay was out, but Yash and uh, Runyon's injuries are new as well. Um, for limited participants, Kenny Clark, after leaving the game on Sunday, um, was a limited participant with his shoulder injury. Rudy Ford was a limited participant with his calf injury after he had missed, I believe last week. Yes, um, yep. Elton Jenkins, um, his knee, I believe, is the same knee that he injured against the Falcons. Um, he was limited, and Aaron Jones' hamstring was also limited. Um, notably, Aaron Jones did not have the red no contact jersey on today, according to mm. one of the uh, one of the beat reporters. So that's worth noting. And then Christian Watson was a full participant in practice, um, despite leaving after that catch and where in which it was reported he was being tested for concussion as well as back and rib injuries so seemingly his glass bones did not break <laughs> in that in that contested catch yes. for the pittsburgh steeler um former i'm almost certain i feel like i have podcast right now former packer montravius adams uh yes. had an ankle injury and he was he did not participate um minka fitzpatrick they're Pro Bowl slash All Pro level safety had a hamstring injury. He did not participate in practice. Um, Cam Hayward, their franchise defensive lineman, had a groin injury. He did or was he was limited in practice. And um, after coming back last week, to yep, play perfect. That love to hear that. <laughs> and then uh, Elandon Roberts, uh, linebacker, had a knee injury. He was limited. So that's it for the Pittsburgh uh, injury report. Obviously almost or more than half less than half of the length of the Packers injury report. So Steelers coming in a little healthier than the, uh, than the Packers for sure. Healthier, but you would say bigger pieces, maybe at yeah. least some bigger pieces on their on one side of the ball, at least. Right. Exactly. Um, mainly Kenny Pickett, I guess let's get right into it. Uh, Kenny Pickett, 
leader of this Matt Canada offense, despite all of uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fans begging and pleading like we do with uh, Joe Barry for offensive coordinator Matt Canada, Matt Canada to be fired um, for, I'd say, a pretty, pretty decent reason. Their offense has been pretty lackluster. Uh, they don't have the greatest offense, I believe. Yeah, Steelers have an average of 16.6 points per game. Um, and the only teams that have fewer points per game are the 2-7 and seven Giants, the 4-4 four and four New York Jets, and the 2-7 and seven Patriots. So, notably, all four of, or all three of those have had quarterback issues this, this year between Daniel Jones missing time for the Giants, Zach Wilson existing for the Jets, and uh, McCorkle Jones not being able to pass the ball downfield for the Patriots. Side note, the, uh, side note, I'm sorry. Did you see, no, you did you see that there was a report? I, is it a from Bleacher Report or some aggregator that they might fire Belichick after the London game if they lose? I did not see that. Yeah. I'll have to try and find that to make sure I didn't get like ball sacked or something, but the, it hasn't been good and it's looked pretty bad. Um, we should have mentioned the Steelers have a negative 30 point differential. The Browns, who they're slightly ahead of because of a tiebreaker, I would assume, has a plus 42 point difference. Jesus. Um, yeah, they're they're an interesting team, uh, to say the least. Yeah, I, I would say it's the kind of the epitome of the Mike Tomlin hover around 500 mantra that they have going on. I think Mike Tomlin's a pretty good coach. I think if they have a decent quarterback on that team, it looks a lot better than what it does. Yeah. I think Kenny Pickett's fine. Um, I ultimately just don't think he and his small hands are what can really lead an offense to a deep playoff run. They're good, but I think they're good at the behest of their pretty awesome defense. Um, we'll get into the their offense a little. I guess we can keep going with their offense. We'll just start there, and then we'll talk about their defense a little later, but um, to go with their their lackluster offensive output, uh, 27% of the Steelers' drives end in a score. That's the third worst in the NFL. Um, third worst points per drive at 1.29, which is not good. Um, second fewest plays. They average the second fewest plays per drive, 5.3. A lot of three and outs, and rank third in fewest yards per drive, 24.3. So, it's going to be t- like if, if the Packers defense wants to come up and show up again this week, it could be a similar esque performance from the front seven um, and from the secondary against Kenny Pickett and company, depending on the day, I guess how the wind blows that day, honestly, because some days it looks like Kenny Pickett and them can really string it together. And I think like you had mentioned in your, um, in the notes, even though they have a pretty poor offense, their defense keeps them in games, and they've had three comeback uh, victories and three game-winning drives. Yes. What, what is what is not dead, or what is it? What's the quote? What is dead may never die. Yes, exactly. That kind of describes the Matt Canada offense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, former Wisconsin Badgers uh, offensive coordinator, if that gives you any that, illustration. That tracks. Of what, uh, exactly right it's, right um yeah i just <laughs> I, I saw a lot of people talk about like oh the steelers are just essentially like the afc packers and it's like yes i don't i think it's discrediting <laughs> i think it i don't know i i don't see it match up for me as much because their defense actually like has kept them in games in terms of like they have all pro talent in in TJ Watt, Micah Fitzpatrick, Cam Hayward. You mentioned earlier, unhealthy to start the year, but starting to come back and at least playing games. Their linebackers have always been decent to good, even though they just lost uh, Cole Holcomb. That's gonna be a big blow for them for the rest of the year. Joey Porter Jr. Like I could go on and on and on about like just how formidable their defense is. And we're talking about their offense. <laughs> um, I just think they have, it, it's, I don't know. It's so weird to me. Cause it's like their offense for sure is like, it is. That's where I see the comparison for me where it's okay. 
got a young quarterback. Running back duo, duo is very different than Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon. Aaron Jones is the most proven out between, you know, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. Young studs at wideouts with Deontay Johnson, um, George Pickens. Uh, who's the other wide receiver? Calvin Austin? Is yeah, kind of, he, he's kind of on the fringes out there. He's fringes. Yeah, second yeah. second year guy who is um only has 24 yards in the season, but has um I thought he had a touchdown, but apparently he does not. He might have a rushing touchdown. Mm. Oh, I, I, my, um, my apologies. I was looking at the wrong um the wrong line. He has 14 catches on the season for 162 yards and a touchdown. My apologies. Mm. There, there definitely is an identity with them in, in terms of offense, and they don't get the best out of their production. Pickett, as much as he has been hurt for many of the games this year, has a lot of problems too in terms of accuracy issues, making the right making the right throws at the right times. He's uh, um, had some miscues with like throwing picks and getting sacked a bunch. Like, I do see it from that perspective of like, okay. Going into Sunday, it's going to be which offense kind of over overperforms expectations, and which one kind of falls in line with the expectations that we had going into, it just because of what we've seen so far. No, I agree a thousand percent. Like they, you had mentioned their receivers, and their receivers are very talented, and they're I think they're young. Like Deontay Johnson is is a machine. Um, has. 23 catches on the season so far. George Pickens has 30. Um, I think they kind of go back and forth. Uh, Johnson has missed three games of the of their season, where Pickens has started every game. So um, I think if he was healthy, Deontay Johnson would probably lead this team in, in receptions and in total yards and touchdowns. And regardless, he's just pretty good. He does lead them in receiving touchdowns. I'm sorry, George Pickens says. I'm looking, I keep looking at the, the wrong lines on pro football reference so my, my apologies but i think the the biggest thing and the biggest thing for this defense for the packers is going to be stopping Najee harris and jalen warren Najee harris the th- third year guy out of alabama um jalen warren the rookie out of I'm trying to find it uh pretty sure it was tcu nope i lied oklahoma state so he is kind of usurped Najee Harris as like the lead back they they kind of split time Najee Harris um has 382 yards and two touchdowns on 100 attempts while Jalen Warren has 263 yards on 56 attempts so um almost a full yard per more um attempt from Jalen Warren as opposed to Najee Harris so they have a, a tandem it's just how effective are is the tandem at in, in a given game, essentially, because there's games where Najee Harris isn't really that effective, and then there's games where sometimes Jalen Warren isn't as effective. It really is a um, riding the hot hand kind of, of mantra from Matt Canada and Mike Tomlin as to how they're going to operate their run game. And if you have both of them going in a given game, then it's it's kind of hard to defend that. But at the same time, um, you might get lucky in where neither one of them can get, a, can get it going during a game. But I don't think we've seen that quite yet this year. Yeah, I think Warren kind of scares me more just because. Oh, a thousand he, percent, a thousand percent. He's he's more of the Bijan's kind of Bijan's just a, a Bijan's a unicorn. Um, Jalen Warren is a, it would, is a is a horse painted white with glitter thrown on it. It would be like <laughs> Khalil Herbert last year when David Montgomery was also going off. Yeah. Like that, like kind of, okay, you're, it's the one, two punch. You get the counter, then you get the jab. And I think to your point, it's clear that between the two of them, that the Steelers have really done a good job of incorporating them and knowing when to, who to turn to. Yeah. Something that obviously the Packers have got to get better with, with, with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, provided that they're fully healthy, which Last week was a good example of it, but I do think we can see just how Warren might bend the defense a little bit more and really test the run defense that really has looked a lot better over the last couple of weeks. Yep. With the caveat of going against 
lesser run offenses. Yeah, I think that'll be the a big thing this week is can this um, rushing defense the Packers have been putting together the last few weeks hold up against better talent? Uh, help the Vikings uh, and the and the Rams against uh, under seventy yards rushing for both games, which is which is impressive. Given Alexander Madison hasn't really panned out to be what they had hoped he would be after uh, departing with Dalvin Cook, and then the desolation in the Rams running back room didn't help last or didn't help them last week in the their rush defense against the Packers, but. Najee Harris and Jalen Warren have the ability to to pick up some yards when they need to. Um, for what it's worth, Jalen Warren is the much bigger passing or ca- receiving threat of the two. Has 29 catches for 200 yards. So looks like he uh, is still behind Najee Harris in total yards. But, I mean, if Matt Canada wants to ride Najee Harris instead of Jalen Warren on Sunday, that would make me very happy. Because I- I'll tell you what, I am a... Najee Harris hater like I'm up all night just hating on Najee Harris hoping for his downfall even <laughs> wow I just don't think he's good I think it it was I was I burned in fancy just maybe I was gonna say just maybe there's always there's a tinge but, of fantasy right burned. but then you like start looking at his tape and it's just like you start watching some of the games and he just doesn't really have like he honestly Jordan, he looks like September AJ Dillon. Like he just kind of just looks like I he's. I hate that you just use that the months. Well, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. AJ Dillon's looked good lately, so I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna roll. He with has that. looked good, and it does not. It should not matter what month it is. He should play well all the time. It's still nice in Door County in September, Jordan. Where do you think he is all the time? It's October. Sure it's it's November now. You're starting to get the heavy winds in Door County. It's kind of a pain in the ass to be up there. I know I mean, you just Star, came up there. He's but... playing Starfield on Twitch. No, far, Farming Simulator. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's what it was. <laughs> um, regardless of all of it, I think you still need to keep <laughs> you still need to keep Deontay Johnson and George Pickens in check. And I think it's it's hard to be like, hey, nice job against Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. Now I'll go guard Deontay Johnson and uh, George Pickens, Carrington Valentine. But it's just that is kind of his his job now is you're going to be up against wide receivers one and two. Hopefully you can stay with them for most of the game. Like you're going to get beat sometimes. It just is the nature of that position and is the nature of being a seventh round rookie cornerback. But if he can have a similar performance against a I'm not going to say similarly similarly bad quarterback because I think that's unfair to Kenny Pickett despite me not believing in him. But I still think it is in that same realm of Kenny Pickett's not going to have an oh, like a, a huge game, right? I don't really expect him to have this crazy 400-yard, 45-attempt passing game, right? He's going to not be throwing it too often because they don't, have a lot of plays on their drives are relatively short so if you can get your your bursts and play well against those receivers to limit them to three and outs or five and outs that's fine with me i think the biggest thing will just be that front seven stuffing holes in the running game and pressuring kenny pickett yes that that's the key obviously it's like any key to packers a packers win but really what we've seen from the line, the pressures, even though last week was a little on the lighter side, and the only sack that was credited last week to the Packers is Jonathan Owens. Um, I do think that we can, I hope to see, like every week, just what this Packers, the edge rushers, the uh, run stoppers, all kind of in tandem work together in terms of just shutting this thing down. Because, like, as you mentioned, the offense itself is kind of like it's always going to be in the middle. They're not lead, they're not like lead, leaking points defensively. The Steelers are. They're not even, but they're also not getting down the field. They're, I one step they saw today too that I think I forgot to put down. They have like the uh, the fewest red zone attempts. Oh God! F- 15. 15 red zone attempts. Not ideal. There's, not ideal. Seven for fifteen on the year, so they're not even really 
putting it all together in the in short field situations either. So they, it's always just kind of in the middle. Like it, it's like a soccer game where it's like, okay, you have possession, they have possession. Yeah, like it just kind of like this battle back and forth, and really like be uh, the Steelers. That's the Steelers that I think of, especially since like their last like hurrah between Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown, um, Deontay Johnson kind of got in the late stages there. I'm trying to think of another like explosive receiver that they had that um, I cannot think of. But yeah, like that that Steelers offense of like this could, they're always going to be in the hunt for contending for a, a, a Super Bowl. Now it's like, okay, we've reverted back <laughs> so far the opposite way where it's like we're trying to win in so like these scrappy like 1930 games where like field position is just like paramount kind of thing no absolutely i think for what it's worth to um the pittsburgh graded like from from pff they are the 31st graded uh pass blocking unit in the nfl uh, with a, a total score across their eight games so, of so far of 46. The only team worse than them is the Giants. Um, and then 21st in run blocking. And so that line is definitely a, um, a detriment to them right now. And if Rashawn Gary can tee off on Broderick Jones and um, I just had read his name and now I, I, I can't find it again. My apologies. Okafor, I forget his first name. But they can tee off on their on their tackles, they could they could feast honestly, and so, um, Chuwama, oh my god, Chuckwama Okafor. My apologies for for getting through his name late, but yeah, they're they're the tenth and eleventh ranked pass blockers on that team, and even in their, I mean, say what you will about it, it's pass blocking, but um, Darnell Washington. Their tight end, Con- or their tight end, another tight end, Connor Hayward, another tight end, Pat Fryermuth. All these players, Najee Harris at 22 snaps, like all have better grades than their linemen at pass blocking. Even in like, even in run blocking, um, it's not really much any better. They're they have Rodney Williams has 19 snaps run blocking and is the second highest rated run blocker on the team at 66. Calvin Austin is their leading run blocker at 80 and a half. He's a wide receiver. Like they just don't, go. they just don't have a lot of talent on that line. And so that's where we're, I would, what I was saying earlier is if you can get Rashawn Gary going this game and get, have him get home to sort of counter the havoc that TJ Watt and companies that have on the other side, cause some turnovers, force a fumble in the backfield to give your offense a short field. That could be, be really beneficial um, for the momentum of this game on Sunday. Yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll just we'll have to see. <laughs> do you want to? Uh, do you want to move on to the offense now that we've? Uh, not the offense, but the Packers offense versus the, oh, the Packers Ste- will be Steelers defense. defense. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So unlike the pa- the Steelers offense the Steelers defense is filled with talent uh Cam Hayward TJ Watt Minka Fitzpatrick if he's available like they're just they're just good on defense um Alex Highsmith um their rookie Keanu Benton from Wisconsin he's having a huge impact this year um or he's I think he's a second year guy maybe no he's first year. He, he's a rookie okay but their other rookie uh Joey Porter Jr um Obviously, Joy, Joy Porter's the Pittsburgh Steelers legend son. Um, Marcus Golden, like this defense has players. The identity of this team is its defense. Yeah. And I think the the biggest thing is just blocking TJ Watt, right? Like that's that's just the, the, the main factor in winning games against the Steelers. Uh, nine and a half sacks this year for TJ Watt, tied for second for most of the NFL. Obviously, having played one less game than most of the NFL, having had their bye week already. Um, but as we've seen last week and then weeks prior, um, offensive line has been a little shaky and been a little a leaky up the middle, we'll say. Um, even on the end with Rashid Walker, like he's he was playing fine to start his, his tenure this year. But 
has I think I don't want to say exposed because exposed makes it seem like it's just this huge gaping hole of, of a player when in reality he's a second year player that is getting into his rhythm of things and I think he's just getting beat by better players like Max Crosby, Aaron Donald, and whoever else. So um sometimes or sometimes during the Rams game Yash Nyman was in there. Uh, I think after some of the penalties He started. Nyman did, yes. Yes. Um and but Rishi Walker out snapped Nyman, I think after Nyman went down with the yeah with the injury. So they were about even thirty seven to thirty five, so I'm not going to say they looked better or worse with the Nyman or Walker in there. They still had some pressure on Jordan Love throughout the game. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this this front four or five from the Steelers is going to be blitzing, I think, a whole hell of a lot against Jordan Love and the Packers. And I think from that, there'll need to be a lot of quick throws like there was last week. Yes. I, <laughs> I'm very worried about what the – problem that TJ Watt poses to this team because we've seen them struggle with star pass rushers this year. Mm-hmm. Protection for love has gotten uh, worse as the year has gone along. Obviously a lot of injuries, especially the left-hand side between Elton Jenkins, missing a couple of games, David Boxiari, that's on its own level at this point, but between Walker and Nyman kind of, at least uh, being like a dual tandem at left tackle. You know, we'll see where, where, how that will shake out. And obviously with Nyman be on the injury report, it'd be very interesting to see if he progresses, if he gets better, like they, they'll need the depth regardless, because it, at this point, we've seen a lot of rotation on this offensive line beyond just that, the left side of it. Man, the floor, I believe one of the things that he's talking about was today as a recording was Sean Ryan filling in for John Runyon Jr. and looking very well in that in those moments too. So it's like we'll see those players play snaps. Um, hopefully it just doesn't come as a result of injury or anything like that. But yeah, I mean, star pass rusher, TJ Watt, pretty self-explanatory of just how he could really wreck this Packers offensive line and get to Jordan Love. And you know, I'm not I'm not very bullish that they can keep it up for very long. But it's if you can do it for a couple drives here and there, and get something together on those drives where T.J. Watt is pretty quiet, then then we're cooking with something. But you know, it takes a lot to get to that point too, especially with this Packers offense. Right. No. Absolutely. Um, I think I can't find the exact the exact uh, tweet, but I know LaFleur had talked about how Sean Ryan has earned his spot to start playing snaps again, um, especially with Runyon uh, being, or if, if Runyon is out through um, throughout the the week and then in the game on, on Sunday. So we'll see how it goes. That pick has been belabored over by a lot of fans, I think kind of us included at times. But yeah, I think limiting TJ Watt and sending all the blockers his way and kind of making sure that he's got a double team always is going to be pretty important. And I think if you can successfully double team him, then you might be in um, in line for some success in your offense. But he's shown enough skill to be able to get around double teams and have enough creative blitzes in that, that playbook to free him up for a pressure against the quarterback. Like he's just that all pro level player that can, that can do it. He's good enough to beat double teams like Aaron Donald and the rest of the elite pass rushers. Yes, absolutely. So that I think that being said, a lot of quick throws again this week, like quick throws to the outside, um, three-step drops on some stuff, and having the entire offense be coordinated in their ability to just run the plays and execute them well. Like that was the, the downfall against the Vikings and the Raiders was poor execution and not allowing love an opportunity to throw the ball against a defense that had Max Crosby. He was holding the ball a whole lot. And then in general, I think for she Rocker just had a tough time handling, handling him too. But when, when push comes to shove, you have to put Jordan Love in a position to succeed. And I think this week, that'll be a lot more um, of, of the, the medicine 
to cure any of those sort of issues that that Drillo might have against this defense because if you have him back there holding the ball for more than four or five seconds, he's going to get hit. I think there's just really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Well, I, and honestly, it's not. I think the more time that Love has time to diagnose down the field and stuff like that, that's where his worst traits really come out. Yep. It's throwing deep shots. It's going for the home run plays, especially if you're down and you're trying to stage a comeback or if it's two-minute drill time and you know the circumstances still apply. Jordan Love is at his best when he has quick time throws to to make and to take. And the longer that he has free reign to kind of see what's out there, I thought he did a better job of it with the Rams game, not only just completing deep balls, but he did make check down passes. Like AJ Dillon has still been a factor in that in that intermediary range, mm-hmm. I would say. Um and I, I like that we saw that from him last week. It's just a matter of, you know, kind of keeping that up again. But the Steelers defense is not. <laughs> it's it's certainly going to uh, pose problems to kind of ruin that template for him to succeed. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it, to say the least. Like, I think watching him work in rhythm will be a, a, one of my – it will be my, my player to watch, per se. But it will be something I'm looking forward to watching because – he plays well in rhythm, and I and I really hope uh, we get to see more hurry up from this offense. Because I think when they are going hurry up, they have a lot less mental errors. Like they they've gone it a couple times, and they do get a mental error in there once or twice. But I think just playing football and getting into a rhythm like that is a really good thing for for the rookies and for Jordan Love. And maybe that might be a good way to really limit the pass rush from the Steelers. Like if they have to keep the same guys in the field, then if you're going quick, it's hiking the ball every 20 seconds, TJ Watt and Cumber are going to get tired. And you can put together a long drive like that, maybe two long drives like that going between the hurry up and then some more cadence offense. I think that's a good alternative um, offensive strategy that could limit the damage that this front four can really do. Uh, from the Steelers. Agreed. Um, I kind of want to go back to the, uh, I guess we'll go back to the defense in a minute. The, um, the um, Steelers defense and the, the Packers defense. Hold on. I got, I'm mixing up my, my points. I want to go back. You know what? Never mind. I, my apologies. I'm reading my, our notes wrong. Joey Porter Jr. gets attacked a lot. 21 targets. He's been targeted. Um, has only allowed six receptions and then one touchdown. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Picked on picked on is not necessarily the the right term for him. He's getting they're they're trying him. Let's say that. They're trying Joey Porter Jr. and failing a whole lot. Yes. So he definitely looks like the the proper pick there I, was he first round or was he second? I thought he was. I thought he was first. He might have just. I want to say the thirty second pick. He was That's, the second round pick. He was the yeah. He was the thirty second pick. That's because the Dolphins had a forfeit there. Yeah, yeah. Technically thirty three, but yes, he was the first pick of the um Which, second round. The Steelers acquired from the Bears in the Chase Claypool trade. <laughs> Do you remember Chase Claypool is not on the Bears anymore? He plays for the Dolphins now, allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen him do a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I think he'll probably match up with Romo Dobbs, if I were to bet, since he's like the biggest threat for the uh, the Packers right now. Um, Patrick Peterson is now on this team. Uh, he and Levi Wallace have um, coverage grades of 54 and 53 per uh, PFF. And they've each allowed four touchdowns this year. So say what you will about Patrick Peterson's career. He's pretty darn good. But it seems like he's the one that quarterbacks against the Steelers have been really focusing on and trying to have success against, which they have. I'm very curious because I don't think this is how they will 
go about it. But we have seen moments, at least sort of as going good, um, that the Packers have picked on certain matchups or certain guys trying to get them in different spots and everything like that. I wonder because Wallace and Peterson have been very leaky in terms of they both have allowed four touchdowns on the year um, when targeted. Getting them looking towards the outside, if that'll be more of a uh, point of emphasis going into the game because, you know, with Christian Watson healthy <laughs> for the time being. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Um, I'm sure we'll see a lot of the go routes. We'll see the, the deep shots downfield. We'll see if it actually works. But Romeo Dobbs, maybe Devontae or Dontavian Wicks keeps getting more snaps and then kind of uh, works his way into you know, matching up with either Wallace or Pearson too, like on the outside. I just wonder if there'll be a set game plan, obviously to start. And then as things settle into the game, I wonder if the floor and level want to take more shots at, you know, who is guarding who a little bit of match of football, if you will. Yeah. I think that's probably the right way to do it. And I think as we talked last week, getting the run game going first will be more important. And hopefully that when they do take those shots, either down the field or just try and throw the ball in general, that they are like coordinated and not like, I hope that the first reads is what I guess of what I'm trying to say, that the play yes. book is playing out and the game is playing out in a way that Jordan Love has an opportunity to go through his reads and his first option is open and that they sort of maybe test Joy Porter, see if they can have, um, success, success against him but if not on the first or second try just keep going back to the to the receiver not being covered by Joey Porter at that point because if Joey Porter is going to have such a great season like he's having already then why try and test him like just throw away from him and switch up your receivers on on who's there like if, you, if they're playing man and he's shadowing Romeo Dobbs or whoever then that's fine but then that gives a great opportunity for Honestly, Luke Musgrave, Christian Watson, and Dontavion Wicks, even Jaden Reed, any of those four yes. players to have success across the middle or just on the lesser cornerbacks that are going to be um going to be covering them. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you look hesitant again. I think that's that's fair given how we've been uh we've been perceiving these last five weeks of football after uh what was a rough four weeks and then a good last week but good last week but we also i mean we talked about post game the offense it it was more a clicking in tune it was there was more execution or fumbling that stopped drives but i just don't know if you know the steelers defense is a lot better has better talent but i just worry of like what if it just kind of reverts back into you know what didn't work for four weeks rather than what worked for one game. Well, Aaron Jones, if he if he plays, then that'll be the big thing, right? Like that's what we talked about is if Aaron Jones can have it can be healthy and have sustained success in both the running and passing game. In theory, it really should open up the rest of the offense. Yes, yes, in theory. <laughs> in theory, um, I found out what I wanted to go back to, and it was the the pressure. Um, applied by the Packers front seven on the on the line because we had some some stats here that I didn't get to to read in my little spiel. Um, but thirteen recorded pressures for the Packers last week. The only sack being the one on um, Jonathan Owens' strip sack. Um, the Steelers left tackle Dan Moore Jr. Um, currently grades out as one of the worst linemen in the league this season. Uh, with over two hundred and thirty eight passing pass blocking snaps, has allowed two sacks, six QB hits, and nineteen hurries. So. I think like that's honestly that's going to be the, this game, and we'll kind of get into it in a second here with our our players to watch and our score predictions. But um, how do the Packers really take advantage of that? And I've said it for like for weeks now. Rashawn Gary just needs to get home. Like he's he's getting there. He's almost there, Jordan. Every game, and he was there twice last game. Even if he's offsides, right? And he was there twice last game, despite the offsides, and had a takeaway due to penalties. 
So I think if we can have more discipline in the penalties, obviously, across the board, that's going to be huge. Like You can't be giving the Steelers more downs to play with with penalties. Like A disciplined week this week is probably one of the more crucial aspects of this game plan because the offense is so is so bad you can't yeah. just be keep giving them first downs on penalties it just you just can't do it and so how does this defense one get off the field and can they take advantage against a poor a poor offensive line do we see more stunts do we see more inside moves to get guys loose like the three big guys in the middle kenny clark Devontae wyatt and one of or and tj slayton get some pressure going they push those guys back and make kenny pickett run to the outside and run into rashawn gary run into preston smith of a rogue luke vaness like i think that'll be a huge thing this week i'm really looking forward to watching those those front four or five guys same I, I it's fairly as helpful that Kenny Clark is healthy. Uh, that is a bullet dodged, um, but you know it takes it as much as we focus on Gary. It, it we do want to see the Preston Smiths, the kind of secondary pass rushers, if you will, kind of step up and maybe make a mark on this game too. Because Gary's doing his part; he's not getting home, but he's doing his part and just kind of you know always posing a problem to tackles and offensive linemen but would like to see a little bit a little bit you know different looks maybe more blitzes with a more healthier defense obviously with Jair kind of being the biggest question mark on of the starters at this point but and Quay yep but yeah we'll see I think we're gonna see throughout the rest of the season a lot less creative um blitz blitz packages like we saw a lot of Razul and Keisha Nixon coming off the edge um, for some blitzes and Jair once in a while. Um, I don't think we really have the personnel anymore without Razul to to do that. So that'll be an interesting wrinkle as to how that develops throughout the season. If if they really will just go rush five, like Clark, Gary, uh, Wyatt, Slayton, and Preston, and go by go by it that way. But if we see a couple of those interesting uh, blitz packages, carrying the Valentine off the edge, Jair off the edge, that could be something that poses well. But I think that's relying a lot on Keyshawn Nixon and your other secondaries, secondary players being down, obviously Razul being gone, but also Donald Savage and Eric Stokes. Like, it's just hard to blitz with these inexperienced players. Like, no disrespect on a on a personal level to these guys, but like Jonathan Owens, Rudy Ford, Carrington Valentin, and uh is Corey yeah, Corey Valentin still I I don't know why, for some reason I want I was like they've cut Corey Valentin, but I don't think that's true. It's No, not. they signed him. They signed him to the, the team, right? They had, yeah, 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 yeah. So but those four guys, they it's hard to run those blitz packages when you have to rely on those four guys in coverage. And it's yes. more difficult to do that with their caliber, with their playing ability, than it is with their four starting uh, secondary players when healthy earlier in the season with Stokes, Savage, Jair, and uh, Razul. Now it's Jair kind of by himself uh, being asked to do the blitzing and relying on those lesser guys to, to stand and cover Deontay Johnson and George Pickens, which is a very tough task in the first place. Yes. Very much so. Um, anything else, or should we get into our players to watch in our score predictions? Um, let's do yeah, let's do players to watch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go first this week because I have that privilege, and I'm going two defensive players if you'll let me. But my first one mm. is T.J. Watt. I think he is going to make his imprint on this game no matter what. Um, nine and a half sacks through eight games is a pretty solid number. You can pretty much count on him getting a sack in this game because he's just that good. Possibly two, possibly three. He's just that good of a player. What I really want to see too is making sure 
that Jordan Love is smart with the ball in the pocket too. Like getting strip sacked and having a good tight grip on the ball or getting strip sacked is pretty easy for TJ Watt. He's like a ball hawk when it comes to that. So having a mm-hmm. tight grip and like having that ball secured before you're throwing it is going to be important. And hopefully a lot of quick throws too. So TJ Watt is my my first player player to watch. I'm going to go a little, uh, I'm going to go off the beaten path. Jalen Warren. Interesting. This is my Rashid Shaheed level pick of guy to watch out for. I just think he has the kind of tools to really be a thorn in the Packers side. And all it takes is one play for him to just burn down the field and get a touchdown or whatever. The fact that he's been as targeted as he has been in the Steelers offense, whether it's by choice or just kind of check downs over the course of a play. Doesn't matter. I, I think he could really do damage against this Packers defense if they revert back to what we usually expect rather than the last couple of weeks. Oh no, absolutely. Like I, I totally agree with you that if I would have picked I think um TJ Watt, it'd probably have been somewhere on offense and it would probably would've, probably would have been Deontay Johnson or Jalen Warren for that matter, because like you said with regarding Jalen Warren, but Deontay Johnson is just that good. Like he's a very talented player who can burn you in more ways than you'd like to like to admit as a as a football fan. He's just a really good player. Get catches a lot of balls. He think he's like he's like Kenny Pickett's like kinda go to guy. And so it'll be interesting to see how they how they handle him regardless. So um, I will give you the honor of picking your uh, your Packer first. I I'm gonna go with this one. Not very confident. I'm gonna go Christian Watson. Wow. Yes. Noted. Because... Noted. Not hater of Christian Watson, but. No, Del- just daughter been, of his health. I've been very disappointed <laughs> at all the Packers Nation has been. Um, I, I, a part of it is the connection between Love and him down the field is just hasn't largely been there. Oh God, no! Save for a couple of throws, that's largely but what he's been used for this year. There's probably other ways to get in the ball in some different ways that they have yet to really try, but. I think if the Packers are going to win this game, they're going to rely on one big throw to Watson. And I'm just asking for one. If it's a touchdown, that'd be great. I would love a touchdown that's more than just like a red zone target. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I, I, he just has that, like, ability to just break open a, a game. And we have yet to really see that for a lot of reasons. This year, yeah. For yes. health reasons. And I think new, new, New QB reasons is one of the big ones as well. Mm-hmm. So um, my Packer to watch is going to be Rashawn Gary. I think pretty simply, hey, you've got your contract. Like you, I'm not like saying go earn it or go like make use of it because that's just a ignorant thing to say. But I think he's got it. He's going against one of the worst, um, one of the worst offensive lines in the league this is the time to really tee off and really start going uh, at these linemen and make your your impact. I think that is going to be the most important thing is can Rashawn Gary have an impact on this game, get to Kenny Pickett, maybe cause a strip, uh, strip sack like Jonathan Owens did last week, and let's just see it. Let's see you make use of the talents you have and have this be the game that you're, you've broken out against after coming back from this in, from his injury last year. This is like kind of the game to do it. I'm sure they'll treat um they'll treat Rashawn Gary the same way that the Packers are going to treat TJ Watt on that side, but it's just critically important that I think they get home this week, frankly. Like it's going to make or break the game if they can make Kenny Pickett's life kind of hell. And yes. if if they can allow him to be comfortable and they get the run game going, then that's really kind of all there is to it. 
Yeah, I would love love to see the Packers defense continue their ways of starting out the run, getting home to Kenny Pickett. Um, yeah, it, it would be great to go. And again, we mentioned it at the start of the pod. It's been what fifty three years. Yep, almost nearly, nearly fifty three. Yeah, nearly 53 years in a month. Um, that would be great to win in Pittsburgh. It's always been a, clearly, a city that they just have never done well in. Yeah. I can still remember that one game where it was the year before they played them in the Super Bowl. Okay. Where they lost 37 to 36 on a two point conversion at. I do not remember that. Yeah. It sounds like a painful way to lose. It was. And with that. Jordan, <laughs> who do you have winning this football game? <laughs> Don't sound so stressed about it. I know you can Steelers, do Steelers 20, Packers 16. Really? Mm. That's what I can't be surprised anymore. I don't think you picked the Packers to win in a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um... I think the defense does have the impact I'm blowing. I'm hoping that they make it. I think they build up this, uh, they build on this momentum they have coming out of the Rams game. I'm going to say Packers 20. No, I lied. Packers, yeah, 20. Steelers 13. You're picking them to win again? It worked last week. <laughs> it, 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 I, I'm, I, listen. Listen. <laughs> As I stuttered through this explanation. I just have hope that this momentum coming out of the Rams game can be sustained. I, I'm telling you what. I'm not picking them to win next week against the Chargers. I will have that receipt. I'm not. Like, I just, okay. I, I won't. Because I think the, <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get into it next week. This week, I just think that the Packers offense will be able to sustain the momentum, but that the Packers defense is going to really have its way with that, um, with that offensive line of the Steelers. I think that's the biggest thing, and I do think they have success. Especially if Quay plays. Yes. Quay, yeah, Quay's going to be Big. huge. Yeah. So, all right, folks. That does it for us. Um, thank I you. I can't believe you picked them to win again. Listen, man, I, 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 I went away from them for one week against the Vikings, and I came <laughs> right back. I went, came, came back to the, the food plot, and I'm, and I'm munching on some, uh, some Packers good, good mojo. That's all there is to it. <laughs> um, thank you all for listening. As always, you can find everything Eurostep Podcast Network at gspn.info. Uh, links to the Discord, which you can go join in and talk Packers, Bucks, and Brewers with us throughout their respective seasons. You can find links to the Eurostep Podcast feed, which has um, a new pod, I believe, coming out later this week. But if not, you can for sure go um, listen to Ty and Rohan talk about the starters and their um, their discussion on if it's time to switch out uh, Malik Beasley for uh, Jake Crowder or Marjan or anybody else. So go listen to that pod. Uh, Jordan and Adam, listen to them on when and six. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you have a pod coming out later this week um, regarding that. But I, it's TBD. TBD. Who, who's to say yes? We'll, who, we'll have who's some... to say Who's to say me? Because I'm one of the hosts. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll have we'll have some end of the week action. Talk about the Bucks. They keep winning. Everybody's mad. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they just won. I'm not sure if they you were, did just win. Yeah. Were you also watching it on the second screen I, while the other? I was. <laughs> well, I, I was, was talking. Paying attention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> while you were talking, I was watching and the so other yeah, game. I was getting ejected <gasps> in one of the. I did not see that. Yes, that is why the Pistons swung it. Oh. Right? Yes. Okay, interesting. Wait till you see. Wait till you see how yeah, I was gonna eject. Oh boy, um, go listen to Adam and Andrew rip Craig Council and Mark Antonazio a new one on <laughs> cruising for a bruising because that traitorous son of a you know what 
went to the Chicago Cubs instead of anywhere else in the entire universe. Um, so much for being a hometown kid. It's ass ass. Yeah, that I'm I'm that's all I'm going to say on it. But true, it's was, a really it's true a really, Wisconsinite. My ass is my opinion on it. <laughs> it's a really good um, uh, breakdown. If you consider the context of it coming out an hour after yeah. or being recorded an hour after the news drop. <laughs> one of the most wildest uh, half hours I can remember scrolling on Twitter. Yeah. Of, and it's baseball. It's not, we're not talking about NBA trade deadline. Yeah. We're talking about baseball. And it was like this, like, ah, we're, <laughs> it was like this, who done it? And then all of a sudden it was like, I did it. And then Craig House like pushed us down the stairs. Mm-hmm. That's what it was like. That's exactly what happened. So go listen to them. They have like, Jordan said a really good breakdown of it all. Um, also, go listen to Adam and Andrew on Make Time for this and um, their ranking of the top Martin Score 50 films, as we discussed last week. So, all that being said, thank you all for listening. Uh, check us out on Twitter at New Mac is Known, at Jordan Tresky, and at Packers GSPN on Twitter, um, at Watch GSPN on Instagram and TikTok. Um, go follow us over there. If you're a pod listener, go subscribe to the YouTube. We're putting out clips from the pods there if you want just short, sweet little. Um, breakdowns of stuff in the pod share it with your friends share the pod subscribe to the youtube i think we just crossed 1600 on the youtube is that true i believe it is i knew we were getting closer to it and thank you to everybody that has subscribed to our youtube channel uh 1.6 so i'm pretty sure we are like legit I'm I'm hovering. Now, I'm we're not ho- rounding up here. Oh no! I'm lo- I'm hovering over like the account when you like do it in YouTube, and it says 1,600 subscribers exactly. So thank you for everybody that has subscribed over there as we continue to grow that channel. Um, we really do appreciate it. So thank you everyone for listening. We will be back uh, in your podcast feeds on Monday. Um, stay tuned for a possible, maybe, just maybe, live on Sunday. We shall see. Uh, I am traveling this weekend, so we'll have to see how, what my ability is to watch the game in a timely manner. All that being said, again, thank you so much for listening and being a part of our community. And Jordan, thank you. Thank you.